Significant figures for conversion factors don't affect the number of sig figs at all and are considered to have what's called infinite sig figs. So now our big focus will be metric to English conversions. You'll not need to memorize English conversion factors. You'll be given any that you need on the test, but you still need to memorize how to make your own metric conversion factors. Now we're going to work through four sample problems and we're going to use the process called dimensional analysis, which we used with our metric conversions last week. So always start by taking your given value and placing it over one. So I'm going to draw my crossbars and I'm going to put my given value 34 pints and then I'm going to, you're going to put it over one. You don't have to but it's a placeholder. Now we want to set up our units to cancel. So the pints are up here at the top. They need to come down at the bottom of the next step. And then I need to find a conversion factor that uses pints. And I'm trying to get to gallons. So here we have two pints equals one quart. So we're going to use that one. So we're going to have to write two next to pints. And this is equal to one quart. And that takes care of this step. Notice that my pints have canceled. Now I need quarts to cancel and I'm going to bring them down to the bottom of the next step. How did I know not to stop there? Because I'm trying to end on gallons. And since I'm not at gallons here, I can't stop yet. So I bring quarts down and now I need to find something with quarts. Now notice one quart equals two pints. That has quart. But we don't want to use that because we just came from pints. We want to keep moving forward to gallons. So ideally we have a conversion for quarts equals one gallon. I want to use this because that'll get me from quarts to gallon. So it's going to be four quarts equals one gallon. Notice that quarts cancel. And since I have gallon here and that's what I want, I can stop setting up my problem. I'm going to write equals. And now we can use a calculator to figure out our answer. You can use a calculator on your phone. You're just going to type in this first number, 34. You're going to divide by the bottom, multiply by the top, divide by the bottom, multiply by the top, divide by the bottom. So essentially, you can ignore the ones, and it's really just 34 divided by 2 divided by 4, and that is going to get you 4.25 is your raw answer. Because we start with only two sig figs, this can only have two sig figs. So it's going to be rounded to be 4.3. So 4.3 gallons is my final answer. Two, we have 132 yards is equal to how many inches? So we start by taking this given value and putting it over one. 132 yards over one times draw a line. Now, I want yards to cancel, so I'm going to put yards at the bottom of this step. And now, I need to find a conversion factor that has yards, and we have this one, one yard equals three feet. So we're going to go one yard equals three feet, and notice that yards have canceled. I am now at feet. Is that my final answer? No, because I want to get to inches. And so that means we're going to have to go another step, times, draw a line. I need feet to cancel so it goes to the bottom of the next step. And now, do we have something that lets us go from feet to inches? Sure we do. That one foot is equal to 12 inches. Notice that feet cancel and I'm left with just inches. That's what I want my final answer to be, so that's how I know to stop setting up my problem. And now, we can calculate our answer. We're going to type in the first number, 132. And then we're going to hit times the top, divided by the bottom. Don't actually have to divide by one, though. Times the top, divided by the bottom, equals, and we get 4,752. However, I can only have three significant figures. So 4752, rounded to three significant figures. This number is going to just stay a 5 because it's followed by a 2. And then I'm going to need a zero placeholder here. So this is going to be 4,750 inches is my final answer. Now you try. Pause the video and try these two problems using the conversion factors 
and then unpause the video to watch how to work them out to see how you did. Number three, we're going to take 14 kilometers and we're going to put it over one. I want kilometers to cancel, so I'm going to bring it down to the next step. And now we're going to use a conversion factor with kilometers. We can use this one, 1 1.6 kilometers equals one mile. 1.6 kilometers equals one mile. It's because there is no conversion straight from kilometers to feet. So I have to go with something that we do have, kilometers to mile. Kilometers will cancel. Now we have miles, but we're not done because we're trying to get feet. So in the next step, I'm going to put miles at the bottom. And now let's see if we have something that allows us to go from miles to feet. We do. One mile equals 5,280 feet. Now miles are set to cancel. We have feet here because that's what we want. We know that we can stop setting up the problem and then we can type it into our calculator. Type your first number 14 times 1 divided by 1 1.6 times 5280 divided by 1 equals we get 46,200. We can only have two significant figures so this is going to be equal to 46,000 because I'm going to put a zero to place hold for that too. And feet is the unit. Number four, we're going to take our given value 23.4 milligrams and put it over one. Time, draw a line. I'm going to set milligrams to cancel by placing at the bottom of the next step. And now we need to make a conversion from milligrams and notice that milligrams is metric and anytime you have something metric you want to go to the base and the base unit of milligram is gram and then hopefully we recall that gram is bigger so it's going to get a one and then milli is at the thousand place and so we have one gram equals one thousand milligrams milligrams cancel we are now at grams we're trying to get to pounds so we're not finished times draw a line I want grams to cancel so I need grams to be at the bottom of the next step and now where can we go with our grams well we happen to know here that kilograms equals a pound so if I can get to kilogram then I could use this conversion factor kilograms to pounds and that would get me to my final answer so I'm going to now convert grams to kilogram using a metric conversion. Kilograms is larger, so it gets the one. And in our chart, there's a thousand next to kilogram. So one kilogram equals a thousand grams. Now grams have canceled. We're at kilogram, not quite to our final answer yet. So one more step. I need kilogram to cancel, so I'm going to bring it down to the bottom. And now I can use this one. 1 kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. 1 kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. And notice kilograms have canceled. I am now at pounds, which is what I want my final answer to be. So I can stop setting up the problem and I can type it in my calculator. 23.4. Then it's going to be times 1 divided by 1,000. Times 1 divided by 1,000 times 2.2 divided by 1. Remember this was an L for pounds. Okay, we get 5.148 times 10 to the negative 5. I can only have three significant figures, so I'm going to round it off here. It's going to be 5.15 times 10 to the negative 5. And pounds is the unit. So this is a pretty tough one right here. It's the hardest it could possibly be on your test. Notice that we had a metric unit and we went to the base. Once you go to the base, you can go anywhere from the base and we went to kilograms specifically so we could use this conversion factor next. One kilogram equals 2.2 .2 pounds.